Hey guys, well I have had a very busy summer. I've been doing much more digging than what I anticipated. And uh, because I've been doing so much digging, I've kind of neglected some things that I like to throw in on my channels uh, when I get the opportunity. Um, it's time for me to kind of do a mail call. I've been given some pretty incredible things from some just awesome, very generous people. Um, some really, really cool items that I want to share with you. Some really cool history behind some of these items, including a coin that, uh, you know, most people I don't think know about it. I had never heard about this coin. It's a U.S. coin, and it probably should be on some of our bucket list because there's a chance to dig the thing. And it's got a good story behind it, so I'm going to share that with you. Also, I want to do a little giving back myself. I have not done a giveaway video in quite some time. And uh, I have a ton of fun doing that. It's just cool being able to, you know, surprise, a, a, in particular, a smaller channel just getting started. Um, and you guys have really jumped on board with that. That tickles me to death to see, you know, somebody that's, you know, maybe got 100 subs or something. They wake up the next morning, boom, they got 150 or 60. That's just fun. Um, and uh, so I want to do that. So got another channel to highlight for you. So you guys sit back. This is kind of going to be a midweek video. I try to do one a week. We're going to throw this one in as a bonus. Check out some of the things that some of you guys have sent me. So how many of you guys have ever found a silver dollar? I'm still looking for a half dollar, uh, even a clad half dollar. I've never found one, never found a silver dollar. But I know a lot of us are, it's on the bucket list. We want one. So if you could find one, what do you think it would be? A Morgan dollar? Or a seated Liberty dollar? Or a Peace dollar? I got one more to throw in the mix. Have you ever heard of a U.S. trade dollar? Check this coin out. A friend of mine uh, has decided to help me out with my collection of trying to get at least one coin, one type of every coin um, minted by the US within reason. Some of that's unreasonable to try to get. And uh, you know, I go to schools and talk to kids, so it'd be something that I could use to, to show the kids some US coinage. And uh, so this friend of mine's uh, been sending me coins. Well, he sent me this one and it shocked me. I had never even heard of this. It's got a really cool story behind it. So let's take a look at the U.S. trade dollar. So here is the, an 1878 trade dollar. And I want you to take a good close look at it. And look at all the detail on this coin. And we're going to talk about it in just a second. But before we do that, I need to talk about why this coin was even made in the first place. So what's the story with the trade dollar? Well, back in 1865, Asia was really opening up to international trade with Europe and the Americas. And at the time, the one currency that they really preferred and accepted was the Spanish Real. In 1865, it was a Mexican peso silver dollar. And that's what they had always accepted, and it was pretty much the only thing they accepted. Well... Mexico messed up because in 1866 they changed the design on their silver dollar and they included an image of Emperor Maximilian. Now, no big deal, right? Well, for the Asian countries, they didn't like change so much. They were suspicious of it. And so when this new coin pops up, all of a sudden Asia just isn't digging the Mexican silver. Well, that provided a prime opportunity for the United States. We had trouble too, because Asia would not accept U.S. silver dollars, the seeded uh, dollar. And what we had to do was run down to Mexico, buy silver dollars from them at a premium, and then we could trade with Asia. And that hurt the pocketbook. So the U.S. was looking for a way to cut out the middleman. And when Mexico had this currency change, it provided prime opportunity. So we make the trade dollar. Now we didn't just make a, a dollar the exact same size as like our seated dollar. 
we upped the ante a little bit and we made the trade dollar heavier. Heavier than the U.S. seeded dollar and heavier by about half a gram than the Mexican silver dollar. Well, this just pleased the Asian companies very, very much who doesn't like a little bit more bang for their buck. And so all of a sudden, Asia is now accepting U.S. silver trade dollars. Now, it's funny because a lot of these coins came back from Asia and there's something called chop marks all over them. And that's basically whenever somebody accepted one of these silver coins, they wanted to test it to make sure that it was legit because there was some counterfeiting going on. And so many of these coins today have got chop marks all over them. Uh, it's a little bit harder to find a clean coin. And also, counterfeits are out there. In fact, um, I saw one digger last year, I can't remember who he was, but he dug a trade dollar. It's the only one I've ever seen dug, and it was a counterfeit. So that's how the trade dollar came to be. But why did it only last five years? Well, the Comstock load. All of a sudden, the U.S. was flooded with silver. And as you know, that drops the price of silver. So suddenly, the silver dollar wasn't worth a dollar anymore. It had become devalued. And so the U.S. just wasn't that interested in minting any more of these coins. So the life of this coin is pretty short. 1873 to 1878, um, for your standard issue coin, they did make some proof coins all the way up until 1883, but then that was it. So that's the story of the trade dollar. But a few years back, I took an art class, and they talked about iconography in that art class. What's iconography? Well, it's images used in art, images that tell a little bit of a story. They have meaning behind it. There's some pretty good iconography on this U.S. trade dollar. So let's take a look at the image on the dollar and talk about what it means. What is the iconography of this coin? What's going on with it? Well, you've got Lady Liberty seated here. And what is she seated on? It's bundles. Bundles of trade goods. And even there's kind of a shock of wheat right there. And at her feet, you'll notice the ocean. So Lady Liberty is facing west and extending a palm branch. So everything about this coin screams, we want to trade with you. Um, you know, the Orient at that time, a lot of people refer to it as the East, um, but most of these coins, a large number of them, and this one included, were minted in San Francisco. And, you know, the uh, Asian companies, when they would ship goods to America, it arrived in port, you know, in California. So you have Lady Liberty seated on what is basically the shores of the Pacific Ocean with her arm extended out across the ocean toward Asia. Kind of cool how the design of that coin really tells its story. So I hope you learned something. I hope one of you guys digs one of these. It was a coin I didn't even know existed. All right, here's something else I wanted to show you. In the three years that I've been detecting, this is the only Civil War items that I have personally dug. And they share something in common. Both of these, when I dug them, I did not recognize them as Civil War relics. Now this is uh, just an incredible piece. It's a, a D-Guard Bowie knife handle. And then this just recently came out, and that's the infield bullet. Both of those, I missed that initial excitement at the hole of knowing what I had dug because I did not know my Civil War artifacts. So my friend Kathy Mall sent me this. Guys, this is an incredible little book right here. It's a big book, actually. And it is loaded on the inside with these awesome photos that show all of those little metal items that we might run across when we're out there digging. And we discount them sometimes because we just don't know. And so knowledge is power. She sent me this incredible book. Thank you, Kathy. I have absolutely been tearing through this thing, studying it. And uh, I hope to run across a few more of these items before I'm dead and gone. 
but hopefully I'll know what they are next time. All right, guys, another day. Not too much of a view this morning. The clouds have yet to lift. Let's do this giveaway. And I'm really excited about this one. Um, when Kathy Mall came to visit, and you know, she gave us uh, some really cool things, but she brought something from a guy by the name of Jake Easterling. And he had given her some things to pass on to me. Now, Jake lives over in England, and I would say most everybody here in the U.S. would about give our right arm to go over there and dig because of the age of the stuff that they find. Well, Jake sent me this stuff in a little bag, and I dumped it out. Two things struck me. Some of this stuff's really old. And the second thing, it was filthy. He didn't even clean it up, left all the dirt on it, and for a digger, that's awesome. Because we get to go clean those things up. He said, I'm not even sure what some of this stuff is. Clean it up and find out for yourself. That was awesome. And I have spent a month cleaning things up, studying about things, and I have a pretty good idea of what I'm about to show you. But what's even cooler is I talked to him and said, Jake, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, and I want to give away some of the stuff that you sent me. Because it's so cool and I know that you guys will appreciate it too so let's take a look at it and we'll talk about this giveaway all right so here is what Jake sent me and man what a great assortment of items we'll go through them real quick but look close because the winner of the giveaway is gonna get to pick out five of these items whichever five they want and I will send it to you so we've got a little, like a coat button with no back mark. That's pretty cool. The shank. This is a British military button. And it's got a crown at the top and a couple lions on each side of a shield, I believe. Check out this button. This one shocked me. I'm looking at that going, man, that's kind of a really cool, you know, early 1900s button. Nope. Check out the back mark. Dickinson, Hammond, and Turner. That button is 1790 to 1820. And look at the condition, guys. Beautiful button. They were a well-known uh, button maker in uh, London, I believe. So we got that. This, believe it or not, is a button. And it's beautiful. I've never seen a button like that. Kind of a scallop shell. You can see where the shank was in the back. It shocked me. I didn't think it was a button. And we've got these. Now, I just had a great conversation uh, with Jake because I was looking at them real close. I had some really good lighting today. And you can really see the bust on that coin. So I started, uh, I hadn't been able to identify any of them, but this one I thought I had a chance. And of course, the first one that I pull up, kind of typing in, you know, <clears throat> spiked crown, Roman coin sort of thing. I pull up a coin that there's only two known examples of ever. And I'm freaking out. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what has he sent me? So I got up with him and he calmed me down pretty quick. It is a cool story though. This coin is called a barbarous radiate coin. And all of these, uh, you know, as best as we can tell, are like third century Roman coins. But in the third century, there was something called like the crisis of the third century. Um, basically, the Roman Empire had expanded so far that all the competing countries around them were beginning to push back. And, and Rome was weakening and it overextended. And they were losing territory really rapidly at this point. So that th at this time, as they're kind of being forced out of areas, the coins that they produced, they didn't have enough of them. So they started making these kind of inferior copies of early coins. And uh, we, you know, we're not totally sure. I think I have an ID on who that's supposed to be represented on there. Um, but... Uh, you just have to research barbarous radiate coin to kind of get the full story but it is third century um and just an awesome piece of history you're looking almost 2000 years right there guys and yeah there's a bust on this one there might be some details i think that may be a left facing bust it's hard to say though so we've got these this has also has a little uh little meat on the bone on the back here 
you will uh, be able to see a kind of a figure standing there. All right, so we got five Roman coins, a couple awesome thimbles. We've got this. This is a Blay Brothers. Uh, and it says London 12. This had to do with ammunition. There's not much known about them, but it's probably 1880s. They were wholesalers of ammunition. And I think this is maybe the back of a, of a shell. And there's an indent right below this 12. And you can see it kind of popping through there. So, uh, you know, I don't know, a primerless sort of uh, ammunition? I'm not sure. There's not a lot of information on that, but it was cool learning what I did learn. And we got this. This is really beautiful. You can see by the little clasp there. This held a stone. Um, and, you know, I just, can you imagine how pretty that was? When it had the stone in it. So I had to get a lot of help from Jake trying to ID some of this stuff. He said, you know, definitely medieval. He said it kind of looks French, maybe 13th, 14th, 15th century. So some sort of little piece of jewelry there. Let's see what else we've got. Oh yeah, this was one of my favorites. This I did ID myself and I was proud of myself for doing it because man, it's hard to ID stuff when you're not from that country and you don't, you know, you just don't have an idea what you're looking at. This turns out to be, it's called two different things. It's called a counter piece and it's also um, considered like a trade token. And a counterpiece would be basically a way you're counting large amounts of, you know, big numbers, you know, bunches of coins. And, and instead of keeping a ledger on paper, you know, for every hundred or every thousand you counted, maybe you'd put one of these down. And they had a kind of a system for using that. But this was made by a, hand, by a man by the name of Hans Krauswinkel. And it's a Nuremberg... Jetten, J-E-T-T-E-N, I believe. And um, this is 1580s to 1620s. It's just, it's really cool. It's amazing to hold something that old. And it looks to me as if it was hold at one point in time. And we got a couple other items here. This is actually the newest thing that he sent me. And I looked it up. And uh, it says uh, Christian Herald Golden Star Brigade. And, um, you know, that's uh, 1900s, best that I can tell. Kind of a, uh, it's kind of unclear on what it was, but it was a Christian organization of some sort. And they had these little pins. And then this beautiful little scallop uh, shell thing. And I guess it was a piece of jewelry because it's got a little tiny hole in it. But I thought that was pretty cool too. And that's probably pretty old. Okay. So there you go. And I'm going to sweeten it up because I know some of you coin guys out there like coins. So let's just throw in a good old 1964D Kennedy half. Well, the fog's lifted a little bit. But Virginia Coin and Relic is the channel that I want you to go check out. Uh, I was really shocked. We've been uh, you know buddies for a good long time as far as, you know, I've never met him, but he's followed me for a long time on my channel. And uh, we've, we've talked quite a bit, you know, back and forth chatted. And his channel, he digs some awesome stuff, some good Civil War stuff. And I really thought that he had more subscribers than what he did. And I went through and I couldn't believe it. I don't think he's got a video with more than 100 views. Well, it's time to change that because he's digging some awesome history. So I want you to check out his channel. And here's the video that I want you to watch. And once again, he's dug something awesome it's a little bittersweet but still any one of us would love to see this at the bottom of a hole check out that video and in the comments on that video just put history hound in the comment and you'll get entered we will do this drawing the contest will end on august 1st that's my birthday so we'll end it there i can remember that and uh and then we'll do the drawing just shortly after the contest ends at uh, midnight on august 1st Thanks guys for watching.